Hello YouTube, Sustainable City Slicker Rick Paris here. Thank you once again for tuning in to Fanfare for the Conscious. And this week we're going to be having a look at the prep work that I've been doing in order to make sure that the garden here is ready for food production and that I have a long term plan in place to ensure that that can continue for years to come. I want to start this video with maintaining focus when it comes to permaculture programs. It can be very easy, particularly with modern society's instant gratification principles, to get distracted when doing permaculture work by short-term gains instead of focusing on long-term goals. Now that is not to say that short-term gains cannot be beneficial, you certainly can, but they should never be prioritised over long-term goals. Perfect example of this. Earlier in the week when the weather was very nice, I managed to waste an hour and a half of my precious time trying to figure out how to do something which was ultimately only going to be a temporary solution to a problem anyway. When in reality, I should have put that idea to one side and been focusing on the more long-term goals in order that I might have actually been able to get a little bit more done this week towards those goals than I was able to do so because of the lost time. So what was this time sink? This time sink was building or attempting to figure out how to build with the components in my boneyard a small aquaponic system to go on the floor next to the main pond. Managed to get these pots emptied, moved all of the clay pellets now over into those bags. <coughs> Most amazing thing, wow do they smell like dirt. Um, that tells me that sort of really really earthy earthy smell because I've never noticed that with the clay pellets before um, is that the bacteria colonies are probably quite advanced at this point if it's starting to smell like the ground then they're certainly producing the right sorts of uh, chemicals to give us a good nutrient balance I'm quite excited to see what we might be able to grow in this this year again this is only ever going to be a temporary solution the pots I was going to use are intended to be moved towards the bottom of the garden to be used in the full aquaponics setup where I'm setting up the greenhouse. So to waste the time putting this, you know, instant gratification solution together, which never ended up manifesting anyway, was uh, a time sink I probably could have done without. Anyway, once I figured that out, very quickly refocused my attention towards creating a composting bin. Very important thing for this setup, obviously making sure that we've got access to you know, compost and that we're able to make use of waste products of the house um, to help us then grow food. Really, really important. So again, using the components from my boneyard, put together a small container um, with plenty of uh, you know air circulation around the sides and around the bottom, and that's now been moved down to the bottom of the garden. Well, we started to fill it up with some hedge trimmings and old leaf detritus, bits of cardboard and started to use the food waste from the house as well in there. So we've got a bunch of that already starting to break down and more to add to it besides. Moving on from that, the next thing I did this week was getting the retaining wall sorted for the um, vegetable and fruit patch down at the bottom of the garden. Again, built that out of old scraps from my boneyard um, and hammered those into the ground. Again, they're not particularly pretty, but they're certainly functional. And then the rest of my time, predominantly this week, has been um, collecting coffee grounds and starting to build up the topsoil and improve the drainage in my fruit and vegetable patch. Uh, main function there has been adding um, some topsoil which was left over from when the front garden was paved and turned into a drive 
got a big bag of topsoil left over from that which I've been using as a base for my compost. To that I've been adding a generous amount of coffee grounds and I've also been adding a little bit of builder's sand just to hopefully help improve the drainage um, and then after I've blended all that together I've been dumping that on the vegetable patch and trying to work that into the soil as much as I possibly can at least the first you know upper couple of inches of topsoil to again improve the drainage and improve the nutrient qualities of that soil. <clears throat> in terms of planting, um, not managed to put an awful lot in. We have got some potatoes in so far. They went in the last couple of days. Dug a trench in front um, of the black currant bushes in the lower portion of the garden, um, just in front of that front retaining wall. We've got 12 seed potatoes in there. Buried a bunch of coffee grounds and tea bags there around the base of those potatoes just because I didn't actually uh, think about blending the soil in together, amateur mistake, blending the soil together before putting those potatoes in. So they are actually in like the quite high clay content soil. However, I have reserved a bunch of the spare topsoil coffee grounds and sand that we will use to cover the potatoes as they start to sprout. Currently 12 seed potatoes in there, or 12 pieces of seed potato. They weren't complete ones, chopped a few of them up into little pieces, making sure each of them has got a little eye on them. Hopefully that they should all settle in quite nicely and start growing uh, over the next week or so. I'll keep you up to date on that. So that just leaves me to take a moment to discuss my plans for next week. We've managed to get ourselves some seeds ready to start planting. So some lettuce. Put some pumpkin. Some leeks. Two different varieties of carrot. And two different varieties of French bean. So we're gonna have a go with the various uh, <laughs> that we'll these next week. Plans are to plant the carrots and the beans and the leeks straight into the soil. They're going to be sown directly. Carrots as well. Pumpkins will, will be starting inside. And um, lettuce. I'm actually thinking about maybe trying another little aquaponics setup with this if we've got the time. Um, if not, could just maybe just try it in the garden, in the ground, and see what happens with that. But uh, I would like to try and get these in, in some form of miniature aquaponics set up just to get that running again. Because uh, I do find it very, very interesting. Maybe something a little bit tidier than the last setup, possibly a little bit smaller as well, but we'll see. Also, besides that, I have got two new plants from Dwayne, the man I mentioned last week. Um, he's let me have a little bit of his peppermint plant, which is growing in a pot right now. If you uh, do decide that you want to try and grow some mint of any variety, please, please keep them in the pots. It is a voracious plant and it will absolutely take over your garden and you'll never get rid of it once you put it in. It's a really, really, uh, really, really hardy, tough plant, so keep it in the pots if you're going to be doing that. Uh, the other one I've got is a little bit of thyme, um, that's currently in a pot as well by the door. Again, I'm going to let that sort of settle in and uh, you know, brush up a little bit before I try and do anything else with it. Again, possibility for that to go in the aquaponics setup. Uh, initially when we do start it running, it will really need to just be you know, vegetable, uh, green leafy plants rather than fruiting plants. But next year we should be able to maybe try and get some tomatoes in there or some uh, you know, other fruiting plants themselves. Anyway, I did want to mention, after speaking to Dwayne, that uh, the strawberry plant that he gave me wasn't actually a complete gift. I did trade it for some tadpoles because he's running his own little vegetable garden at his own house. Maybe we'll head over there if uh, you guys want to have a look at what uh, he's doing with his own garden. Head over there maybe for 100 subscriber special possibly or maybe just another episode in this series. But just let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, so yeah, he did get the tadpoles specifically because he wanted to have some frogs to help control the slug populations in his garden because they've been having a real good go at his great plant which is trying to you know make sure we 
get that one growing a little bit better this year. Anyway, it's been a pleasure talking to you all. I hope you all have a fabulous day. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I've been Rick Paris, Sustainable City Slicker, and you've been watching Fanfare for the Conscience. If you liked this video, please click the thumbs below, and if you want to see more from me, subscribe. I would also love to hear from you in the comments below, so if you've got any questions, any requests, then please pop them uh, in the comments section for me. Uh, also have a look in the description for any links that you might need. You'll find links to the lawfulbank.com forums where you can have a personal discussion with me and help to create the future of our planet and of our country. And also you can find me on the GB Transition Network on Facebook. Now that just leaves me to say, thank you once again for watching, and remember, we didn't come here to play on easy. <laughs>